Hello friends, this video on basic chemistry part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 8. Now we will talk about laws of chemical combination. So there are actually 5 basic laws which governs the chemical combination. I will explain those things. The first is law of conservation of mass. The second is law of definite proportion. The third is law of multiple proportion. The fourth is gay Lusik's law of gaseous volume. And the fifth is Avogadro's law. So we'll talk about all these laws now. The first is the law of conservation of mass. It states that matter can neither be created nor can be destroyed. It's a very critical law. It's a, one of the basic foundation law for the chemistry and for the stoichiometry. So this says the matter can neither be created and nor can be destroyed. And you should be surprised that this was given in 1789, not very old, right? Almost 230 or 240 years old. This was given by Lavoisier in 1789. That was the beginning of the chemistry world where the, metal, uh, the alchemist and the chemistry got separated and we talk about the developments of chemistry with this guy giving this law that matter can neither be created nor can be destroyed. Right? So for two, to give this law, it is just not uh, it is not. It is not a philosophy. Please note, this is not a philosophy. As we have seen that to, uh, in the history of chemistry, a lot of Greeks philosophers we have they they used to give the philosophy. This is not a philosophy. This is actually a law found by the experiments. To found this uh, law, this guy Lavoisier he performed uh, careful experiments based on the combustion. That this guy was fond of oxygen because he gave this num name oxygen and oxygen is pretty available and it's very easy reaction, right? You have something you burn it. That's the chemical reaction. So, so he did a lot of combustion reactions and he noted the reactants and the products for all these uh, the reactions or the burning reactions. And then with, with all his uh, calculations, he gave this law that matter can neither be created nor can be destroyed. For this, he did a lot of investigations, a lot of chemical reactions, and he noted a lot of stuff and then he came to the conclusion that matter can neither be created nor can be destroyed and he declared this in 1789 and this law became the law of conservation of mass. The second law is called law of multiple proportion. According to this law, if two elements combine, for example element H, uh, let's suppose element A and element B, they combine to form more than one compound. For example, A and B combine to form, let's suppose AB, X, they also combine to form ABY. So, you see, uh, the reactants are A and B only, but they form different kind of compounds, right? The ratio of one element that combines with a fixed mass of another element, for example, you make this guy as fixed. If you see the ratio of these elements are in a proportion. For example, let's suppose you fix the A with 18 grams. You see that in B, uh, you see that B in first case takes 10 grams. You'll find that the B, let's suppose, in another case take 20 grams in another case a plus b this guy b is taking 30 grams right so it, it forms a b z so if you see in all these this a this b is in the ratio 10 20 30 laws of multiple proportion so you keep one guy fixed and you you vary another guy to form different products and you'll find that this guy the ratio is always in the whole number actually so they are in the ratio of whole number and this guy is called Law of multiple proportion. This guy is given by Dalton in 1803. And for this also he uh, had a lot of experiments and he found this law. And you see the example for this was given like this. So you have hydrogen and oxygen it reacts to form water and hydrogen peroxide. In both cases my hydrogen and oxygen is there. In first case my 2 grams of hydrogen is reacting with 16 grams of oxygen to give 18 grams of water. In second case my 2 grams of hydrogen is reacting with 32 grams of Oxygen because it's O2, right? It's half O2 to give 34 grams of H2O2. But if you see the ratio of oxygen, this guy is for 16 in first case, and this guy is 32, this guy is nothing but 1 is to 2. This is a whole number ratio. And that is nothing but the law of multiple proportion. So, so you keep one guy constant, in both cases I have 2 grams, 2 grams, and then you react with another compound, also the same but in different masses, and you see that the masses which react is are proportional and this law was found uh, given by Dalton's 1803. Then a new law came called law of definite proportion. It stated that a given compound always 
contain exactly same proportion of elements by weight. For example, I mean this law was given by this uh, French chemist 1806. If you see all these developments happen almost nearby, right? For this, what he did was he took two samples of copper carbonate, cupric carbonate, right? And one was the natural and one which he synthesized in the lab using experiments. And then he found that the composition of elements present in the copper cupric carbonate is same. The natural and synthesized for both the percentage of carbon was 51.35, percentage of carbon was 19.74 and percentage of oxygen was 38.91. So with this, he gave this uh, law of definite proportion saying that you take any compound, you take any elements, right? any, any compound and then you see that this uh, compound will have different elements, example water will have hydrogen elements, hydrogen and oxygen element. So you take any uh, water uh, compound, the composition of hydrogen and oxygen will be same. Similarly, you take any copper carbonate, you make it, uh, you synthesize it or you take it naturally, you'll see that copper, carbon and oxygen, they have definite proportion and that's the law called law of definite proportion. You take any compound and internally you'll see that all the elements in this are definite. Now things look simple to us because we know CuCO3 is uh, this guy, so we have this, this common oxygen copper, but that time in 1806, people were not aware of these, these things, right? So that time they came up with this law and that was very critical that time point of time. And please note, this is also called law of definite composition, law of definite proportion or law of definite composition, both are same actually. Then you have this Lusek's law of gaseous volume. This was given again, again if you see 1808, not very far. The, the previous law was 1803, this was 1808 by Gay Lusek. And he observed that that when the gas combines or they are produced in a chemical reaction, they do so in a simple ratio by volume, provided all the uh, volumes of gas are in standard same temperature. For example, hydrogen and oxygen, if you see, 10 milliliter of hydrogen reacts with 50 milliliter of oxygen to gives 100 milliliter of So if you see the ratio is simple, it is 100 to 50, that is 2 is to 1. The ratio is simple. It is never that 10 ml, 100 ml of this reacts with 49 ml of this, that is not the case. It, the ratio is generally simple when you talk about the gas reactions. And that's what the uh, gay loses law of gas is well. Then we have something called Avogadro law. So this guy, he, if you see this guy is also not very far, it is 18, 1811 now. This guy proposed that equal volume of gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules. And this guy also differentiated between molecules and elements. And with this, if you see that, we say that one mole of uh, ideal gas, you take any gas at STP, is nothing but 22.4 liters. So this guy came with this Avogadro law. We will learn mo more about mole. One mole is nothing but 6.023 into 24 23 molecules. So if you see here, this the molecules are constant, and this my volume is also constant. So if you see any gas with 22.4 liters at STP will contains these many molecules. And that's what this law says, right? So, so you have, you take any gas at a, a specific temperature and pressure. So if it occupies 22.4 liter or any liter, it'll have specific volume. So, but this was taken a reference that if a gas, you take any gas and you take 22.4 liter of that particular gas at standard temperature and pressure, you'll find that that gas will have these many molecules. And this is nothing but one mole, correct? So now let's take some questions. The data are given when this dinitrogen and oxygen react to form different compounds. The question says which law of chemical combination is obeyed here? So if you see here, 14 grams react with 16 grams, 14 with 32, 28 with 32, 28 with 80. So let's make it double so that will make all the reactants as uh, 28 grams, right? So this becomes 32 is become 63. So if you see, I can say that 28 grams of nitrogen reacts with 32 grams of hydrogen or 62 grams of hydrogen in this case, 
or 32 grams of hydrogen in this case or 80 grams of hydrogen in this case. So you find the ratio, you see that the ratio is 32, 64, 32 and 80. Correct. So this becomes 2, 4, 4, 5. This is the ratio and this is a whole number ratio. That's, this is nothing but if you see, this is law of multiple proportion. Correct. This is my law of multiple proportion. So you say that if my one particular thing is constant, so in this case my nitrogen is constant 28 grams, you see the mass of hydrogen required to produce different kinds of compound, you see different kinds of compounds are formed and this uh, the mass of hydrogen required are in whole number uh, ratio. Correct. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.